Back in February, I showed you guys a project called the Tiny Pie from a longtime member of the Pseudomod forums named Moosepur. He goes by Pyocket on Instagram. Really cool project that a lot of you guys seem to like. I mean, that video got over half a million views. Well, now almost a year later, he's back with the next iteration, the Tiny Pie Pro. So the idea behind the Tiny Pie was pretty simple. Instead of fitting a Raspberry Pi Zero inside of an existing shell, he designed a shell around the Pi itself to make as small of a gaming handheld out of it as you possibly could. It succeeded in that goal and I loved it for that, but it made a few concessions along the way. There were only enough buttons to realistically play a few systems, like the NES and the Game Boy, and they could be a little finicky, especially the D-pad. The shell didn't fully enclose all of the components, the screen wasn't the greatest. This new version addresses all of those issues and then some. It has a much nicer and cleaner shell that properly covers all of the components but still gives you access to USB and HDMI, a full Super NES style button layout, including L and R buttons up here at the top, a high resolution screen with four times the number of pixels as the previous version, meaning even tiny text is surprisingly readable, a battery gauge, on-screen quick action menu for adjusting volume, Wi-Fi settings, and shutting down safely, among other things. But the biggest improvement of all, and what I think will excite people the most, is just how quick and easy it is to put together. It doesn't even require any soldering. Seriously, if you can put together a Lego set, you'll be able to put this together in 10 or 15 minutes. I'll show you that in a minute. So yeah, this version is dramatically better than the previous one in every way. He's got it on Kickstarter right now just so he can have the funds to do a big run of these at one time rather than having to do small batches every month or so like he did with the previous version. It does come as a kit, but again, don't let that discourage you. It's super easy to put together. It even comes with all the tools that you need. Aside from the kit, all that you need is a Raspberry Pi Zero and an SD card, and you'll be good to go. As usual, there's a link to a blog post in the description, and from there I'll link to the Kickstarter, a forum section that I set up for it so you'll be able to get help or ask questions about it, as well as where you can get this nice keychain sleeve that I whipped up for it, shameless plug, because seriously, it's that small you could easily carry it around on a keychain. Alright, so let me do a little unboxing for you and show you how to put it together. So first, just let me say he did a fantastic job on the packaging for this. Far nicer than any other projects like this that I've seen, my own included. So here's the main board and screen. It uses these low profile dome style tactile switches, similar to what you'd find in a Nintendo 3DS. Everything's already attached to the board for you. And side note, this matte black PCB is just dead sexy. This is, it just looks great. So at the bottom, we've got a power button that's connected to this microcontroller here, and that handles all the power functions like turning it on and off and shutting down safely. There's a NeoPixel here controlled by it for showing battery status. So if you tap the power button, it'll flash different colors to show you your battery level. L and R buttons here at the top. These pinholes here on the left, you won't use. They're for programming this chip here. Pads to connect this board to the Pi Zero, pads that the speaker will connect to, battery connector, charging circuitry, and the audio chip. Here's the front side of the shell. It's 3D printed, but not the kind of 3D printing you might be expecting. These are done with selective laser centering, which is a process where a laser melts and fuses together thin layers of tiny nylon particles. So it's far more detailed and clean than the kind of FDM printing that you've seen me doing. I mean, just look at how clean the lettering on these buttons is or how smooth the back of the shell is. That's crazy. Now, as nice as these buttons are, I wanted to customize it a little bit, so I'm using some green ones in mine. I printed these on a 025 millimeter nozzle, and while they aren't quite as clean as the stock ones, they come out really nice and work great. So start by putting the buttons in the front of the shell and fitting the screen and board in there. Four of the screws go in the front half to hold it in place. Now, the kits will come with spacers similar to this one, but there was a mix-up with a few of the early sets that he sent out where the spacers were too big to fit in the L and R slots or the other parts of the case. So I printed my own so that I could put this together. So that's why mine looks different. That will not be an issue with the version that actually gets sent out to people. Slide the L and R buttons over the top two spacers. Next is the middle piece of the shell. First put the speaker in this spot right here. The pins can go on either side. Uh, just make sure that they're facing up like this. 
This uses a cell phone style speaker, and I even put this little baffle in here with a grill at the bottom. It really sounds great, it almost makes the whole thing shake when it's playing really bassy sounds. These little spring-loaded pins are what make it so we can assemble this without using a soldering iron. The rounded side is the side that is spring-loaded, the flat part is the part that goes into the Pi's GPIO pinholes. So just take each one and put it springy side down in all of the holes. Now put the battery in. The tweezers could be handy here if you have bigger fingers. The tab on the connector faces up. Now put the Pi in. Press it down onto these pins and make sure each one goes into its pinhole. They should be almost flush with the top of the board when you press it down. Pop the back on. Four more screws. And that's it. One nice optional detail he added, if you have a 3D printer with 1.75 millimeter filament, these cutouts for the LEDs are actually just the right size to stick a bit of filament in to act as a light pipe. So you can snip a little piece of clear filament and stick it in there and it'll look even nicer. Totally optional, but a nice touch. Pop in your SD card, hold the power button for a second, and you can start putting games on it. Now a couple of things that I want to mention real quick. First, on all the Instagram posts that I did about this, I always saw a couple people commenting saying that it was too small to actually play games on. It's tiny, don't get me wrong, and if you have huge hands then it might be a problem. But I've been playing games on it for the last couple of days, and even games where you have to press two buttons at once, like to run and jump or something like that, it's perfectly playable. Far more playable, I would say, than the also tiny Pocket Sprite. But it's able to do a lot more like Super NES games, Genesis games, Game Boy Advance games, and things like that. Another question that I always see come up with these types of builds is what kind of games is it able to play? For the most part, it can play anything from about the Game Boy Advance back. It runs RetroPie, so it's actually got emulators on it all the way up through the PSP and the Nintendo DS but that doesn't mean that they'll run very well on this at all. So to get a better idea of what kinds of games it can run, you can just go here on YouTube and search for Raspberry Pi Zero RetroPie Performance or something like that, and you'll be able to find a bunch of videos showing what kinds of games it can play. So yeah, like I said, super easy build. I know a lot of people are intimidated by these kinds of projects. They don't think that they'll be able to do it. So if you're one of those people, then trust me, just about anybody can put this together. It even comes with all the tools that you need. Huge thanks to Mooseper, AKA Pyocket on Instagram for sending me one of these to check out. He's done just an outstanding job on this. It's a really cool project. Well, thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions about this thing, let me know in the comments below and I'll try to answer them. And again, check out the link in the description if you want to get one or for more information. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.